Hello, do we still do this face to face? Can, can we talk face to face one last time this year at least? Today is the 27th of December 2020. This is my last video of this year. The last couple of days I received a few cards, letters, emails, messages, pictures, pictures from homes, from partners, partners in crime doing my lessons together on YouTube here and I've been very touched by your messages, um, pictures, your sharing so I can see who you are, I can read your stories, I can read your story and I'm touched, I'm quite, um, I'm happy, yes, and that I have such a good crowd, so so, <laughs> for the last lesson of this year, I actually had in mind something quite elaborate of my own design, a lesson which brings us from sitting to standing. Um, very excited about this lesson, but while, <laughs> that's, that's always the same with me, while preparing for this lesson, I came about a note in my notes and I remembered a a very sweet and short lesson I read in a book. So I researched and I found this book. It's called Anatomy Trains by Thomas Meyer. And there's a short little, like just like a three movement, three movements lesson about how to come into balanced sitting. And because it's not easy to come into balanced sitting, he introduces this Feldenkrais lesson, which was given to him by Judith Aston, 1975, and he has a little remark on it that it might not be complete, that some things might be missing. But I think the lesson I want to teach today, it contains all the central ideas Thomas Meyer, Meyers want to get across in this lesson. And of course, uh, since 1975, many years have passed, I have been in my practice for so many years, so I think my lesson is uh, suitable to teach. It's a little bit longer, it's more than three movements, maybe it's 12 movements. And I will introduce you to this lesson, how to come to balance sitting. I think if you, if you take this lesson, if you take the lesson in, if you accept this lesson, it can do a lot of good. Should we begin <laughs> with a gentle lesson at the year end, a cute little sensible but very deep lesson with big transformational power. And you will need a chair. <clears throat> so when you come to sit in a chair and you lean back, there's not much you can do except for sitting and you can, can't move much. Um, except your neck, and that's what Thomas Myers is talking about, this confined space. He does, doesn't call it confined. He, he, he uses his own terms, like a fish out of the water. Huh? We cannot do, like, we can't use our, our limbs. <laughs> so, please come to the front of your seat. So, uh, that's... <laughs> The, the point, the place where we'll be sitting on the, on the chair, on the edge of the chair, um, not in a philosophical sense, but the edge of the chair is, uh, is the place where we have the most options for movement, the biggest mobility. The, we can go forwards and backwards and suddenly we can actually use our legs for something and we could use our arms for, for, for something, for pressing up or... Um, like moving stuff around, walk and so forth. So this is quite a, a position, a position with many options. And to set up the first movement, please use your hands. Our hands are good for sensing. So find your pelvis, find the, the bones, the bones here that make up your, your pelvis. So you can find there's a, like a line, like a bony line across your waistline, that's like the top of your, your pelvis, and then keep your spine straight or in neutral curves and tilt your pelvis 
Mm, let's tilt it backwards first a little bit and keep your spine like a tree, stiffly like a tree, so no flexion in your spine, just tilt back as a whole, like you would tilt a board backwards and then tilt yourself into the center position again. So tilt, tilt, <laughs> that, that's the word, tilt, tilt backwards, tilt backwards, tilt backwards, and only long before you would fall backwards and then come, come back up. And use your hands to control and to sense what's going on, what's happening in your spine, and there shouldn't be happening much except for muscles tensing up and then um, releasing again. Just to hold your, your head in place, your shoulders in place, everything, your whole, like the whole torso, the whole torso really shouldn't move. It's just a movement in your hip joints, a movement in your pelvis, and you can use the legs for this movement. So it's a movement where you tilt your whole torso, your axial skeleton backwards and back, back, backwards and back to center where you poised, where you balanced on top of your pelvis. So that's our first movement and really take your time for doing that. We want to go deep into feeling and sensing. Maybe sensing is the best word. Sensing the, the pressure with, the, with your feet against the floor, the soles of your feet on the floor, how you push, how you help your pelvis by pushing with the feet and come back up by taking weight off your feet. That's how it works, I guess. The, like what are the mechanics of being able to stiffly tilt backwards a bit and then come back up until you center it. And then let's also try the other direction. So allow yourself to tilt forwards and the movement always starts with your pelvis. The pelvis leads in, in this in this lesson, the pelvis leads the whole movement. So, and again, you can use your hands to help the pelvis roll forwards, but keep your spine stiff, fixed on the pelvis, and then roll back until you feel, oh, this is the center. Or is this already a little bit backwards? And then continue backwards. So combine those, those two directions, backwards and forwards and somewhere in between there's the vertex of the circle we're rolling over or the top of the hill maybe that's a better image somewhere is the top of the hill where you're poised where you're neither falling forwards and you're not falling backwards and then try to make this movement even smaller so you're circling in on this uppermost part on top of your sit bones. And you might close your eyes if you can keep balance without your eyes. So the eyes are closed. If you can keep balance, if you feel safe doing so, close your eyes when you tilt forwards a little bit and you catch yourself, when you close your eyes, you can feel it much better actually, how you catch yourself with your feet. So when you tilt forwards, your feet start to bear more weight. And when you tilt over the top of the hill, backwards, you will feel your feet become more and more light. And actually the feet, even though there's this controlled opening of your hip joint, this controlled extension, let's call it what it is, extension of your hip joint, so the feet become light and they're the counterweight. And when you go back too far, your feet will lift and you will fall back against the backrest. We don't want that. We just want to find the exact position where we're poised, where I am poised, where you are poised on top, in the center, between forwards and backwards. Okay, so take a short rest and I would suggest for a rest, get up to standing. So we take a rest in standing, just uh, float up and
Just stand for a little bit and we take a break in standing. Please come back to sitting. Same place on the chair. Then again, use your hands on your pelvis, on your torso somewhere, to find a place where you can feel movement, where you can feel your spine, where you can feel what you're actually doing. And this time we will modify this tilt. Mm, tilt your pelvis backwards, so the pelvis tilts backwards, but this time allow your back to round. So you round your back and uh, one constraint, keep, your, keep the middle of your head on top of your pelvis. So when you round backwards, don't bring your shoulders backwards, but like, like this. Don't, don't do this, don't bring your shoulders backwards, but keep your head on top of your pelvis. So you round backwards like this and the, like your nose is on, on top, somewhere on top of your pelvis. Where is it? So, so you start to form like a half circle, like half circle and not, not an upwards facing C, but a forwards facing C. Pac-Man. Wow, Pac-Man facing forwards. Okay, so you roll your pelvis backwards, roll with the you round, you, you lengthen your back, you round your back, you shorten your front side, you lower your head, and then you lift your head. And make sure you're leading with your pelvis. So to tell you the movement more precisely. Roll the pelvis backwards and at the same time, as a result of your pelvis rolling backwards, start to round your spine and also the head is part of, the uppermost part of the spine, there's the head and also allow your head to react, follow, to yeah, react to the movement of your pelvis, to round, and then you round your pelvis forwards again, you return your pelvis, and because your pelvis returns up again, your spine starts to straighten and your head starts to come back to its original floating position on top of your pelvis. Do you get all the points? Are all the points clear? Pelvis rolls first, pelvis leads the movement, rest of the spine rounds, front side shortens, back side lengthens, and then up again, and the pelvis comes first. Pelvis rolls first and then it's the rest of the spine that follows and the last part of the spine is the top of the spine where the head is balanced. So again, with your hands, start to feel. So this is the next part. With your hands, feel, feel your pelvis again. See where the, the bony parts, easy to feel the pelvis. Where you can find something, it's like a bone like on the sides or on the back and feel when you roll the pelvis backwards where does it where does the spine where is the vertex <laughs> the vertex the, the top of the hill in your spine is it only your pelvis that rolls and the rest the rest of your spine doesn't do much Let, let's try this first just a very just the pelvis rolling backwards and then come up onto the sit points, sit points, sit points, points of sitting, the sit bones. The pelvis rolls backwards and then up onto the sit bones again. So there's a lot of movement in the lower back. 
and not so much in the upper back. So the next time you roll your pelvis backwards, try to shift that point in this vertex, this, this, the belly of the curve, a little bit more upwards. So when you round the pelvis backwards, the movement is not so much stuck in your lower back, but like the middle of your back comes backwards and the middle of your back erects back in response to the movement of the pelvis. It's always the pelvis that moves first. So the pelvis rolls backwards and really use your hand, maybe press with your hand against the middle of your back and with the other hand, the, the palm of your hand, have, have it on your lower back to feel that there's not much movement in the lower back, but the point of inflection the most rounding is happening in the middle of the back. And of course, so we are used to use the eyes to, to find balance, to not move the head, the head stays stick. Do you know the, the, the video of the chicken? The chicken that doesn't move the head when the farmer is moving the chicken <laughs> or the owl, they can, I think eagle can do this too. But, so don't, don't be a bird but be a human, allow your head movements to follow your, the movements of your pelvis. So round your pelvis, roll your pelvis backwards, round your back, maybe in the middle, and also allow your head to sink, but keep the head like before on top of your pelvis, and then come back up again. So do you understand what I mean? This point of the... Of the the, the furthest behind part of the spine, that it can be in different locations. So you can round only your pelvis or you can round the middle of your back or the top of your back and we distribute the movement throughout the whole spine proportionally, like a proportionally distributed movement. And the head responds to the movement. <laughs> Did I say that already? I, I think so. It's like the tenth time. And this is so important part of the lesson. And actually, when you can feel it, you can feel it. You, uh, let's say, you know it when you feel it. So when the head reacts to the movement of the pelvis, then suddenly lifting the head back to its original position, or where is the original, it's very easy. And lowering the head in response to rolling the pelvis backwards is also so easy. Okay, then um, of course there's the other direction. Forward, should, should, we, should we keep, or let's take a short break. Let's break this up into four parts. So please come back up again, take a break in standing. Just maybe take a little walk or just stand and, and feel how you're standing. already changed, if you can feel, oh, oh la la, there's so much freedom in my pelvis and I can have the pelvis further forward, the backwards, or the head further, yeah, so uh, you can maybe, you can already feel it starts to align itself, that's the beauty, like we just need to provide our nervous system ourselves, the movements, the possibilities to show, hey, see there's so many possibilities, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, and suddenly the nervous system can choose, but we if we always do only the same option, if we never give any option to the nervous system, we always sit like this and only move the head, the nervous system cannot choose anything. So we're providing options. Please come back, come back to sit in front of a chair. That's the part we have where we have the most mobility. Use your hands to help feel your movements and then start to tilt your pelvis forwards. Allow your pelvis 
And I use this trick today. I don't have a belt, but I take my trousers, the top part of my trousers, and I pull it up a little bit. So to help my, <laughs> it's a nice little trick, <laughs> to help the pelvis roll forwards. And then, of course, so this movement happens in the lower back a lot, and it's fun, but not nice for the lower back. So let's distribute, let, let's move this movement a little bit higher up. So use your hands to guide your belly forward. So when you roll your pelvis forwards, use your hands to allow your belly to come out more. So your, pel your belly to round forwards and your, the middle of your spine to arch. So it's not just the lower back that arches, but the middle of your spine, or maybe if you can reach that in between your shoulder blades. And of course, the head reacts to this movement. The head, the head, what does the head do? The head, when the pelvis rolls forwards and the spine arches, then the head can lift and hear. So that's the interesting thing. It's not an over, not a hyper extension of the neck. So when the pelvis rolls forward and the back arches, the head lifts just a little bit proportionally, Propor in a meaningful sense, in proportion, uh, proportionally distributed through the whole spine. It's not, uh, you don't uh, yank the uh, head up and then no, no, no more funny for the spine, uh, for the <laughs> cervical spine, bad for the neck. No, you distribute, you start with the pelvis, the movement also, of course, affects the, your back, the middle part of your back, and the head lifts proportionally a little bit. And you can have your hands, of course, like throughout the whole lesson in different positions to feel, for example, your sternum. Your sternum comes up the moment, the moment you roll your pelvis forwards, the, the sternum lifts. And when you bring your pelvis backwards, all the things come back to place. And take your time with this, of course, as always. <sighs> take your time to do the movements and to find the movements. And are we in the center? Is there a rotation? Is there a weight shift, a side bending? This we will explore. First thing next year. <laughs> so now we stay in this plane forwards and backwards. And then do this movement smaller. Just a tiny, tiny roll of the pelvis forwards, which means just a tiny, tiny lift of the sternum and only a tiny, tiny lift of the nose. And so I take a rest here, this is nice. And then I stay there, you, you can continue. I stay there because I find it very interesting at this second. I find it so interesting uh -huh, to, to have my pelvis support the lifting of my head. I, I find it really quite interesting how this connects and then I come back. I want to do it again. And I just discovered more of the middle of my back. I just discovered more of this. Usually my movements were so much in the lower back and they shouldn't be there. They shouldn't be stuck. The lower back should not overwork. There should be some movement in the middle of the spine. Here it is. Very nice. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> middle part of the spine. And sternum that lifts, okay. I hope you also find something interesting. And where are we? Is it time to take a break? So take a break and come to stand. And uh, again, walk a little bit.
And then we come to the last part. Please again come to the front of the chair, the edge. Use your hand to feel and this time roll your pelvis forwards again like the last thing we did and let your whole spine and your head respond and then come back and continue the movement and continue to roll the pelvis backwards and let your spine round and your head sink and then come back forwards again so we combine the last um, two motions rolling the pelvis backwards and forwards and it's still a very simple lesson so it's it's so straightforward uh, I think it's very cute this little like there's there's not many extras inside this lesson it's it's really straight ahead so so we do all this forwards and backwards forwards and backwards and continue 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 but I give you the next task find the center between forwards and backwards in your feeling in your sensing keep your eyes closed keep your eyes closed if possible close your eyes roll the pelvis forwards extend lift the nose in response to the pelvis and then roll the pelvis backwards again and you pass the top of the hill somewhere and you roll the pelvis backwards and round your back and lower your nose towards your belly and then or, or your pubic bone like this and then forwards again over the top of the mountain and fi find in your sensing in your feeling where is this highest point on your hip joint where your pelvis is not rolled forwards and not rolled backwards and maybe keep your eyes closed so you can really start to rely on this internal sensation of not leaning backwards like we did at the very first movement and not leaning forwards but you go if you will from one C shape to the other <laughs> from Pac-Man facing in one direction to the other Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Pac-Man is like a triangular shape isn't it and so if you have the if you have a good feeling for forwards and backwards stop in the middle stop at the highest point stop at the highest point of your pelvis don't open your eyes yet stop at the highest point keep your eyes closed until you're sure ah, okay this is the highest point of the pelvis then just take a moment keep your eyes closed stay on the highest point poised balanced and now don't change your neck don't change your neck, don't change anything, just open your eyes, slowly. <laughs> so, is this a strange position for the head or what? Or is this a perfect position? And then close your eyes again and continue with the motion. So, continue to roll your pelvis and let your spine respond, including your head, including everything, your ribs your chest and the back and the belly and everything and roll the pelvis in the other direction and you pass the center keep your eyes closed again keep the eyes closed while you roll forwards the pelvis forwards and backwards and everything else so this is starting to become an image an image forms the pelvis is rolling backwards and forwards keep your eyes closed and and try to just sense and form an image like I have an internal idea representation of your pelvis you can feel your feet on the floor your hands your your the back side the front side the two sides left right your shoulders in relation to your pelvis and how the head drops when your 
pelvis rolls backwards and how your head lifts when your pelvis rolls forwards and every time you how do you know you're forwards or backwards but every time you pass through the middle you pass through the middle like find that balanced center when you pass through it just like check a checkpoint in a car race or in a train station you don't get out of the train you don't stop you just know oh i just passed this station and then change directions again and start to center in on this middle part <laughs> am i taking this too far continue 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 until until you can make the movement around the center slower and smaller and smaller and smaller until you really feel, ah, okay, so this must be the top of the sit bones. So these are the top of my pelvis. So this, is the, this must be like the neutral of the spine, not extended, not rounded. This, this is probably the position where the head is balanced on top just like you would balance a basketball on top of your finger. And when you're balanced, you open your eyes and see where your head is at. Ah, maybe this time it's a little bit better. And look around a little bit to the left and to the right and don't change your extension or flexion and just see where you ended up with if you rely on or if you trust your senses, your sense, your internal perception. If you don't correct your posture with your eyes or through the help of a therapist, but if you try to find the position where you're balanced through your feeling. Of course, there's right and left and side bending, everything, but we stay in this front and back plane and maybe your head is like in a completely different position like you would put it usually and isn't 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 that interesting isn't that interesting so target achieved so this <laughs> was my last lesson for this year and then please come up to stand And of course, the same thing is true in standing. The pelvis can tilt forwards and it can tilt backwards. And I'm sure you know people who have the pelvis always backwards. Very busy people. Or have the pelvis always forwards. Also very busy people. But where is the center? In your feeling, where can you position We trust in ourselves to sense and to feel. All right, so I send you off. I hope you have a good transition from this year to the next year. I wish you all the best for the next year. Of course, happiness, financial realization and health. I wish you great health for next year and healthy relationships and that you continue or that you're able to do what you love to do. All right, so if you like this video, please leave your like. If you would like to share what you experienced, leave a comment. Thank you for watching and see you next year in the next video.